Here we go again. Uh, welcome to the Gapster channel. I'll be talking today about the construction part of the GS11 speakers. Thank you for watching. Uh, I'll be talking about the uh, construction part, like I said, of the uh, GS11 speakers, uh, a DIY project that I've started and took me over six months. Uh, for those of you who are just watching this particular video, uh, I made an uh, earlier video uh, that talks about the speakers, uh, which I'll highly encourage you to uh, look at that first. I'll put a link uh, below. Uh, this one is the part two of the uh, of the journey and uh, in this particular part we're going to talk more about the all the construction uh, parts and how the speakers came to life from the very beginning till the very end there's lots of details about the construction and some really interesting parts I still have a couple things missing uh, I've got to put some screws I've got some black ones uh, ready but thanks to one of my subscribers, uh, Vikas, suggested I do some uh, copper-plated uh, uh, screws, which uh, would be look nice and vintage. I might do that. I also have to put the uh, second crossover together. Uh, it's actually working now, but I haven't put it together. Uh, I'll we'll be doing some video about this crossover. I think it will be another interesting video to watch. The GS11s are very unique uh, high-end speakers. These are not your average speakers. Uh, everything, uh, this is a time where I want to go all the way and build the best speakers I could. Uh, these come in two different variations. This one that I call the high-frequency dispersed version is where the tweeter is in the back. And with a quick conversion, it can easily be converted to uh, what I call the time aligned version it is where the uh, round tweeters come actually at the very front and you're going to see all the details in the video about how uh, the speakers were made uh, there's some amazing uh, work being done on the woofer part to make it extremely uh, dense heavy and lots of constraint layers between some wood, some fiberglass, some rubber. It's a very, very interesting build. Same with some muffler design in the mid-range and the tweeter system, the way it moves back and forth. I hope you enjoy it. Without waiting too long, let's build those speakers. I first started with the woofer enclosure. I uh, cut about six pieces, uh, three-quarter inch uh, plywood. Uh, three for each speaker. Uh, here I'm working on the front part, uh, doing the opening for the speaker. And uh, this is the mid portion, which is more bracing part with uh, multiple holes. And this is the center part of it. These were all routed, you want to avoid uh, any sharp angles in audio. And we started assembling the uh, main uh, woofer enclosure. There's a heavy duty 2x4 uh, linking all three uh, portions. Uh, speakers are about 2 feet deep and almost two feet wide, I believe they're about 22 inches wide. And here it goes. Added uh, a one by two and a half uh, back uh, bracing, lots of bracing here, uh, one by twos all around.
the back is a very important part so uh, I added uh, it's, uh, it's a quarter inch piece of heavy duty rubber uh, on it and uh, on top of that there was an additional uh, another piece of rubber which is soft it's like a shredded uh, rubber it's actually used as a mat uh, from a hardware store uh, as always I like using things that are inexpensive whenever I can and save some money to uh, leave it for better components otherwise uh, both rubber pieces were glued with uh, uh, some spray uh, adhesive the back portion is always very important that's a piece that's going to get the grunt of the forces so uh, it's important to be uh, as dampened as possible. So there was an additional uh, uh, layer of plywood added on the outside at, at the very end as well. These are uh, multiple pieces that I pre-cut of the same uh, rubber and uh, these were going to be uh, the inside portion of the speaker. Uh, we'll be painting uh, all the uh, surfaces uh, with uh, acoustics. Basically, it's of rubbery, kind of like a gooey paint. So it's actually very easy. It doesn't slump. You kind of need about two or three layers. Uh, the whole idea is just to uh, keep adding and keep it uh, a little rough as possible. Uh, I love the stuff, it works really good. Here it is all uh, painted. Now we started uh, working on the difficult part. It was a very labor intensive. I had to score the plywood where the bends were really uh, tight. Uh, to avoid any cracks. Some water and some heat uh, helped a lot. Uh, this process took a very long time. What you see here in a few seconds was actually a couple hours of work for each layer. I would have loved to uh, found some uh, bendable plywood but I could not source that around me and even if I probably found it, it would be too expensive. Especially when you need about uh, 8 or 10 sheets of uh, 4 by 8. In total there are 8 layers of 1 8 inch plywood, 1 quarter inch of rubber, a layer of uh, fiberglass resin that gets also impregnated into the wood makes a very hard rigid structure, a sorbacin like layer and on top a very shredded rubber that is soft and slow bouncing. All in all, there's about one and a half inch thick, plus also one inch of foam. On with the uh, second layer, uh, generous uh, brushing of uh, white glue, some wood glue. It would have been nice to have those industrial presses where you can put all your sheets at once and uh, give them one good press. This is a very interesting layer. It's uh, almost like sorbacin, but it's actually blue skin used in construction material. I did some accelerometer uh, testing on it and it worked out pretty good. Here goes another layer of plywood. This is a, a layer of uh, fiberglass. Lots of fiberglass was poured onto uh, both sides of the uh, plywood and that's going to create a very very strong uh, rigid piece in the middle. Very stinky material, that's why I'm having my respirator on for this. So the next layer is a quarter inch rubber and uh, I did uh, cover that with um, acoustics on top and uh, between the two uh, it created a nice rubbery bond. 
after the fiberglass and the rubber, the speakers got very, very heavy. And here goes another uh, layer of plywood on top. This is the very back uh, uh, plate uh, to cover the back. Also makes the back even thicker. And the very final layer had to be mostly glued. I did not want to put nails in it. So there was a lot of scoring in that piece to make it go a little easier. The next day I was ready to start trimming all the edges and make things uh, flat. Big four inch uh, this is, drill. I'm drilling uh, the also. port here. This is the fun part when you get to uh, finish the speakers. Two layers of lacquer after staining them. Binding posts. These are the fuzzy rubber pieces that we talked about earlier. This is um, uh, putting some uh, acoustics on one side and uh, gluing them on the back. It takes about a day for them to dry, but eventually they do dry, but creates a nice bond uh, between the acoustics, rubber and the wood. On top of that, there was two layers of foam. So as you can see, too, too many layers. Uh, some pieces of walnut to make the front part of the speaker uh, glue up here. It's close to a one inch thick uh, walnut with the three quarter uh, plywood makes uh, about an inch and three quarter uh, thick for the front, which is pretty impressive. And here it is, uh, on our final staining. Here you see the down firing port and the special legs. And now that's finished, it got wheeled into the uh, living room. On to building the mid-range enclosures. Quick overview of what we're going to be building so you get an idea what's going on into the video. Uh, this is the um, audio muffler system. It's like a cone perforated and then there is another slightly tilted cone on top of that with insulation in between. The idea is that the waves go into the perforated cone, get into the insulation and get trapped and start bouncing left and right around. And towards the end, there's a reversed cone and the uh, first cone does not touch the bottom. So the waves can escape from uh, the bottom part and get also trapped into the insulation. I did not have a lays, uh, so I came up with this idea of uh, using my uh, and uh, my bandsaw basically and uh, on an angle and cutting uh, multiple blocks that are glued and that's how this piece was born it's pretty actually magical here I'm working on the front portion of the mid-range. There are three pieces. This is the very first uh, front part piece. Using a router to make circles with a center spindle in the middle. It's a technique I pretty much use for most of the parts here. Pretty simple.
You'll soon see my uh, loyal, curious uh, helper. So here uh, we're just uh, gluing up the front part of the speakers. Uh, it's three layers here, just like this is the other side, I haven't glued it yet. Uh, basically the speaker goes in here, the mid-range. And it goes in here, and this goes in here. Eventually we'll be making a hole in this one, a hole in this. This goes on top of that, this will be all glued together. I made this uh, automatic sanding system, I got tired of holding the sander. Here you can see the sanded version, I mean, and the uh, unsanded version. So, uh, yeah, so it looks much better. The next part you're going to see how I built the cone for the audio muffler system that I made. Starts with the uh, 4 inch uh, PVC piping. Big slice in the middle. Using a heat gun here to make it softer so it becomes malleable. And I bought those uh, cones, cheap cones, to make a form with. Gets pretty hot and they were flimsy so I used two of them because one is really cooler after a while. Once it cooled down enough I cut down the bottom and the top and I uh, used some uh, PVC cement to uh, glue it. I was uh, missing a piece at the bottom, so I later on uh, cut a little piece for it and uh, I glued it at the bottom to make a perfect cone. So here are the cones, uh, finally finished them. There are two of them. Nice, uh, we patched up the missing square, so, so it's all good. The inside is lined with the uh, mesh and then a, a layer of fiberglass and on top of that there was another layer of acoustics to keep the uh, uh, to reduce any cabinet resonance. And, uh, this will go here. So we got this. And then this will go in here. I painted some acoustics as well on the cones to reduce any vibrations in the cones. There is a piece of uh, acoustic insulation between the two cones that will uh, be trapping uh, the audio waves uh, in, from the perforations. There is a reversed cone that you see here in blue to help uh, direct the waves uh, into the insulation. You don't see it in my video. Almost done here, putting the uh, final touches. It's always fun when you see them finished. Here it made it into the living room. Uh, it has a small base with the uh, sorbacene layer coupling so the uh, mid-range is actually decoupled from the main base. Uh, soldering the uh, wires. Starting to see some action happening here. Getting closer.
the next part we're gonna see how I built uh, the structure for the amazing uh, RAL uh, tweeters uh, if you remember there's two configurations uh, time aligned and one with dispersed tweeter so the brackets and the connectors are made with a half inch uh, pipe uh, copper uh, and uh, also some connectors uh, the connector is you have a little dimple in the middle, you just have to grind it off so then they can go all the way. It goes from the back and it goes like this and basically it holds like that and now you can Imagine this piece will go here. Forgot how heavy these things are, they're like 10 that, pounds each. That's gonna hold uh, the tweeter, the heavy tweeter. And so a speaker was born. Had to make a special dolly because it's extremely heavy, close to 200 pounds. Uh, maneuvering it, it's not easy. But uh, that's the whole idea, is you want it to be heavy. And so the long road to designing the crossover begins. Many, many sweeps, thousands of them. I was very impressed of the flav frequency response and pretty much all the way down to 20 hertz. A little ripple at the very bottom, below 150, but that's normal when you're inside the room. I started uh, building this with, uh, first I used some cheap uh, components and then I uh, used some bare components. Here is the other side, also the same. Very, very nice frequency response. The crossovers are equally impressive uh, using a combination of uh, MCAP uh, high quality uh, capacitors, MyFlex capacitors, great uh, resistors, and uh, all air core inductors, um, a lot of them are foil. Even the woofer has a huge, large uh, air core inductor because I didn't want to lose any of the, into the resistance to keep as, uh, the base as uh, high as possible. There is a couple of selectors you can see here on the uh, crossover. And these help uh, because uh, the speaker can be changed from one configuration to the other. There needed to be some changes into the crossover. So it just, um, it's just a matter of changing the position of the tweeter and switching a couple of the dials and boom, you're into uh, like having another crossover for the new design. Uh, it took a long time to get to the final product. Uh, I did a couple of videos on how to avoid uh, crossover uh, interference. I'll put a link for them below. It's pretty amazing stuff. You should, uh, if you have time, watch those. Uh, nevertheless, so this all took a long time to make and finally got the right formula. I uh, took the speakers also outside uh, on a dolly, uh, about 200 pounds, extremely awkward. There was no way I could put them high off the ground. Uh, so the best I could do is I put them a little flatter and uh, I took some measurements that way. The frequency response is pretty amazing, uh, almost 20 to 20 flat, uh, and that's uh, it goes. Uh, the woofer goes so low, uh, and that's a good testament for good construction uh, of the cabinetry. The uh, waterfall is also pretty good. If you made it this far, uh, please uh, subscribe, uh, give me some likes, tell your friends about the channel. Uh, I'm trying to keep it uh, going as much as I can. I'll be putting some more videos uh, catered to DIY and also some non-DIY stuff as well. Uh, there's some various things. Uh, have a look in my on my channel. If you click on the videos, you can see all the past videos. There's some great videos about uh, building uh, other stuff like my uh, streamer. There'll be more coming as well. Some uh, some reviews and all kind of stuff in the works. Uh, in the meantime, till I see you next time, look after yourself, stay safe. Thank you very much.